Hi and welcome back to Buffs Vintage Bikes. So in this video I'm stepping away from traditional South African steel frame bikes to cover this Cannondale Criterium that I picked up at a price I couldn't refuse. This will be my first aluminium frame restoration project, first Cannondale restoration project as well. You can see some corrosion on the frame, very typical of the old school aluminium frames. This one generally in good condition, one or two patches that needed attention. I've seen some in a lot worse condition than this before. Along the top tube where those cable mounts are, you'd often find the corrosion starting there. Wherever the paint at some stage was, had a gap in it or a mark where corrosion could set in, you can be guaranteed it would start. Some initials of the welder on the rear stay, I'll chat about that just now. Rocking a 105 group set from Shimano. This one obviously needed a little bit of attention, you can see the rusting rust on it. Corrosion on the spider of the crank arm. The bike is from Cape Town in South Africa. This particular one was very close to the coast. So you can see the clear coat on the group set took a bit of a hammering. A lot of corrosion on it, so it'll need some work. Home covered saddle, leather saddle on it. Um, unfortunately, a mismatched wheel set on the bike. Uh, they came out with 105 hubs and Volvo Alpine rims. And this one, unfortunately, has got a mismatch on the rear. Some lovely bar tape from the early 90s there, Lumo. This particular model is the SR500 which came out with the full 105 group set on it and I found this in the Canada old manual of days gone by where they chatted about the, the builders initials that were put on the back stays either signed or spray painted or stamped into the back stay. This one had a spray painted JB on the rear of it, so I'm assuming that's probably the welder of the frame was at the time. I thought that was quite a nice touch. This particular frame is a size 58 and was built in 1987. The code is stamped into the chainstay, you can see it on the Cannondales. These were very progressive frames for their time. Oversized, heat treated, aluminium welded. Where other frame builders were using bonded aluminium, sort of standard size tubing, Cannondale were the first to try this and it was an absolute hit. Produced a much stiffer frame, probably why they tagged this as a criterium. The frame itself had sharper head tube and seat tube angles, much stiffer frame, wonderful for racing criteriums at the time. Yeah, you can see I'm busy doing some patch up on the aluminium frame itself. Wherever water or corrosion could get into spots where the frame had little lugs added in this area that I'm busy with in the back stay, typically they would pick up the corrosion around these spots. So yeah, I'm just using some sandpaper and then some rubbing alcohol just to get the area clean before I paint it with modeling enamel making sure to touch up all the spots that are exposed to stop future corrosion getting in there. So I normally use modeling enamels that I'll blend to try and match the color. In this instance I was fortunate to get the color pretty close. And then once I've painted it, I let it dry and then I take a rubbing compound and I'll rub it with a rubbing compound just to smooth it out slightly and then I'll hit it with a little bit of automotive polish afterwards just to have it looking as fresh as possible. The frame came matched with a tangy steel mangaloy fork and in this instance I think the fork probably weighed more than the frame itself. Unbelievably light frame uh, just by itself. I think if it was mated with a carbon fork you'd be able to drop the weight of it quite considerably. 
So once the bike was stripped, I could take a closer look at the condition of it. Here you can see it's running a Nito stem, very good quality. Still had the old stickers on the stem from races, Medolo, an atomic bar. Excellent combination of stem and bar. Good quality components for the bike. 39 centimeter wide handlebars. Perfect for criterium racing. You can bump elbows. The stem itself painted in white, but as you can see, it needed some work. The paint had sort of stripped off in places, a bit of corrosion over there as well. So instead of keeping it white, I decided to strip it down, take it back to the brushed aluminium look on it. In this particular instance, I decided I wasn't too keen on having the stem uh, bright polished or mirror polished. So I was using some paint stripper to get it down to base. This took a lot longer than I expected. Either the paint strip I'm using is not really good quality um, or the paint that they used on the stem was just outstandingly good quality. But either way, it took four iterations of stripper onto it before I could get it looking just the way it's looking at the moment. So after getting bored of sitting with paint stripper, I took it onto my scotch pad wheel I hit it with a fairly aggressive uh, scotch guard wheel. I have different grades of wheel that I use on my drill. And in this instance, it was a fairly aggressive one that I used just to get the paint off. And, um, and I was going for a burnished look. So I had to work the stem consistently to get the look of, that I was after. And in this instance, I think I got it spot on. I was very happy with the result of this. Keeping with the white theme, I thought I'd try my hand at a little bit of pantograph painting. Totally new to it, although I have done it on a seat post on a Peugeot before in the French flag. It was a bit easier though. This Nito pantographing, very fine. I never had a brush that I could actually use on it, so I used the tip of a toothpick dip it in the paint and even that was too thick and then once done very carefully try and wipe the excess paint off of it without spreading it too far like I did there but uh, it took a little bit of time and a little bit of effort and once or twice uh, having to go back and redoing it I eventually got it to a point that I was actually happy with the final result on it understated not as bright as the original white stem, but uh, I was happy with the final result on it. Yeah, you can see the rear derailleur looking a bit worse for wear. Clearly the previous owner took the bike down the road on its side at some stage. Big gouge mark in that 105 derailleur. And yet it was working absolutely flawlessly. I think a true sign of the quality that Shimano builds. Back then these 105 group sets and even the Altegra group sets were pretty bomb proof. The fact that they're still here 30 years later is testament to that. It turned out besides the gouge marks which I unfortunately could do nothing about. I think the derailleur cleaned up really nicely as well. I was fairly happy with that. Even the wheels were in good condition. Still plenty life left in them. Then it was onto the seat post. I was going for the same look on the seat post as what I had on the stem, wanting to stay away from uh, the mirror polish finish. I don't think it would have suited this bike well. This particular one was a bit of corrosion in it as well, so I struggled to get the clamp off on it. Once I got it off, I spent some time just giving it a basic cleanup using a bit of Q20 or WD40 
anything along those lines will work just to get it clean and then I took all the parts of the seat post onto the wheel as well and I brushed them up to give them that burnished look the same as what I was achieving on the stem The Sugino seat post is actually in very good condition to start with. I know on steel frame bikes that I've worked on in the past, very often you'll find that a seat post is quite badly scratched due to the way the clamp mechanism on the steel frame works. In this instance, either the machining on those aluminium frames or possibly the fact that the aluminium is so much softer um, means that the seat post has very little scratch damage on it so I simply had to put it on the wheel to get the desired effect uh, no no sanding like I normally have to do to get scratches out and then I found a really easy way to clean up the little nuts and bolts and stuff is to put them in my drawer and then just use a scotch pipe pad um, I'll often spray a little WD-40 or Q20 onto the pad before I start this to give it a bit of lubrication and then just gently run the pad um, over it you don't actually want to rub it so bad that you scratch the chrome you just want to get the surface rust off of it um, and very often I get outstandingly good results doing it like that as can be seen with this particular uh, Alanid and this was the final result of the stem and seat post combo. Rather pleased with how that turned out. I think the decision to go with a burnished look was, um, was better than the mirrored finish in this particular instance. I know some bikes it does suit them. Um, more the Italian classics that have got a bit of chrome on them, I think more suited towards that. Then it was on to the 105 front derailleur. This derailleur was quite bad. I had to actually, or well, I didn't have to, but I decided to pull the entire derailleur apart as far as I could. I normally don't take it down to the springs, um, but I had to get into the little hard to reach places and it's hard to do if the derailleur is in one piece. So the final result was pretty good. I would have preferred it to be better but it did have quite a lot of rust on it and um, functionally it's still very good and overall the condition looks looks good enough for the project then it was onto these levers which had picked up some corrosion damage um, this is something I find often restoring the old Shimano parts, especially if they come from the coast. The corrosion is actually on the clear coat itself, not in the aluminium or the alloy used in the material of the project. To get that off, unfortunately, on a wheel, is you have to make a sacrifice of the logo. Um, not something I always uh, enjoy doing. I prefer to keep the part as original as possible. But in some instances, you're left with no choice, and this was one of them. At a later stage, I am going to experiment doing laser engraving into these parts. Maybe not these parts in particular, but I want to experiment with it. I know uh, guys that do pantographing that don't have pantographing machines uh, will often use lasers to do their engraving. I personally have a friend who has a business in it. I just haven't got around to actually taking parts to him to see what we can achieve with it. So I'm quite looking forward to that. I think the outcome should be pretty smart. On to the brake calipers. These were in actually pretty good condition, uh, considering some of the other parts. 
often quite fascinated how, for example, the levers or the crank would pick up such a lot of corrosion. And then the calipers, uh, which are obviously picking up, you know, spray from the road and stuff like that, somehow fare better. Now, I'm not quite sure if it's a different material used on them, um, but it is quite fascinating sometimes. So I pulled the calipers apart entirely, spent a lot of time with the Scott Sprite wheel cleaning up each little part individually and then obviously uh, lubing and oiling and reassembling them it turned out really well uh, my apologies for this video being uh, out of landscape mode if that's the right word for it it's what happens when you doing your videos using an iPhone and you sometimes forget to see your have a closer look at your orientation and then it was on to the cranks, which were by far the worst part, the worst condition of this particular build. As you can see, the sea air had got into them, done a bit of damage, but nothing insurmountable. Certainly can be brought back to life with a bit of time and effort. In this particular instance, I decided to do away with wet sanding of the cranks. So normally I would wet sand the crank through probably four or five grades of wet paper going from coarse right down to very fine to get a polished, to then get it onto a polishing wheel to get the desired effect. On this particular bike I was wanting to keep some of the deeper scratch marks on the crank although there weren't too many of them. Um, but I didn't want it so smooth that the cranks looked like they'd just come off a showroom floor. So I simply used the wheel to get all the corrosion off of the cranks. And then from the wheel I took it straight onto the polishing wheel using Autosol. So no wet paper, final fine paper um, to try to get that mirror finish. And I was very pleasantly surprised with the final outcome of this. At the end of the day it saves a huge amount of time if you're just using the wheel as opposed to the to the wet paper and it saves you a lot of uh, skin on your fingertips often as well and this was the result of it there you can see the spider which is just on the wheel and then the polished arm and you can see some of the marks from the shoe of the rider still on it as well and that's the polished arm and then closer to where the pedal goes you can see some of the slight marks as well which is what I was after so meaning I don't want it absolutely clean clean as a new crank would be so it turned out very well typical criterium sporting 170 cranks so that you don't pick up a pedal going through the corners of course and then each one of the little bolts were put into the draw machine and cleaned up as best as possible as well before I finally assembled the, the finished cranks. final result turned out pretty bling. I was pleased with that. Unfortunately I had to sacrifice the Shimano 105 logo on that crank arm as well. But maybe I'll get back to that at a later stage. And then it was onto the wheels, basically just stripping the hubs apart, cleaning them up as best as possible, giving them a fresh coat of grease, putting new bearings in, getting them running like new. This little, the inside of this hub had a weird, like a piece of metal that had sort of ingrained into the actual race itself. Over the years, strangely enough, it was still running smoothly. I wasn't sure if the video picked it up. And finally, a visual result of a couple of hours of hard work. All the parts cleaned up and ready to go back on the bike again.
finally time to put it all back together again. My favorite part of any build. In this instance, uh, the BB, as you saw right in the beginning of this video, was absolutely toast. Picked up a lot of rust on it. I was surprised I could get it out of the frame as easy as what I did. Actually, I had no resistance to get that BB out. I was expecting it to be corroded fast. Um, sad to have lost it because it was a tangy BB which is normally very good quality I'd love to have kept it but I replaced it with a sealed BB on the build fortunately I was able to retain the original headset it was still in very good condition and the only mismatch on the bike currently was the rear hub and the rim which is non-original uh, I've added matching, I've added matching uh, tires to the bike and at a later stage I will be sourcing a 105 hub and a Walber room so that I can bring the bike totally back to original and sorry the, the only other non-original part was the saddle I think the original SR500 came out with a white Veta saddle South Africa those aren't so easy to get hold of of course um, we don't have uh, our eBay is not as active as what the States or the Europe is so if we want something we normally have to import it and often at costs that are a little bit exorbitant so I did as best I could in the situation uh, replaced it with another really good quality saddle for the time being To adding some fresh bar tape although the condition of the original bar tape was good I felt I wanted to take the bike back to the original which was white bar tape um, it just sets the bike off a little bit better in my view I would have loved white brake hoods as well this particular one had black, black brake hoods and I can't get hold of white ones There's another view of the JB initial sprayed into the stay on the frame. From what I'm assuming is the welder of this particular frame or the finisher of the frame. And that brings us to the end of this restoration project. If you enjoyed it, please give my video a like. If you'd like to see more of my work, please subscribe to the channel as well to be notified of future projects that I'm busy with. In this particular one I stepped away from the South African builds. Lockdown left me without stock so I decided to try my hand at a piece of American art and I absolutely loved it. I was very pleased with how this Criterium series turned out. The bike itself looks good. It rides exceptionally well. I've been fortunate to take it on a loop close to home which is very criterium orientated thoroughly enjoy it there still got the old Cannondale logo on the head tube that originated from the Cannondale railway station I believe and uh, I think they've been through four different logos since lovely old roll saddle that I added to the bike extremely comfortable I think a white saddle will suit it better however and she cleaned up very well
Victoria Derailer still sporting her war wounds. And another beautiful bike ready for another 30 years service. Keep well.